Yeah, if you would explain uh, the the different part of of yoga, as yoga is, some might think it's just uh, uh, exercising, uh, or some might think it's just meditation. Yeah. You know, but as there's so many aspects, and I, I don't know all of them, so uh, that would be interesting. Well, yoga is. It's a, a culture, it's a lifestyle, mm -hmm. you know, there's a way of yoga, yoga eating, yoga food, you know. Mm. Yeah, well, if you say yoga food, uh, are you talking about Ayurvedic food or, or even something else? Yoga food means, well, it, it must be vegetarian, mm -hmm. it must be vegetarian, yoga, the yoga diet. The yoga diet is there, so it's a vegetarian diet. It's not vegan, it's, it's vegetarian. It's not, ve not vegan. Vegetarian, no. that's the only criteria? Well, no, that's one aspect of yoga. Well, no, but, but uh, the diet. for the diet. For the diet, well, vegetarian, lacto-vegetarian, means you can take milk products, mm -hmm. not vegan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The yogis, are fought, they, they will keep cows. They mm -hmm. like cows and they will drink the milk mm -hmm. and they use also the ghee. Mm -hmm. They put oil outside the body and ghee for inside the body. Mm. Mm. So the yoga, the yoga diet is like that, that we want to use what is natural. Mm -hmm. It should be things which are actually grown locally, mm -hmm. not things which you have mm -hmm. to bring from far away places, mm -hmm. but you want to eat what's actually produced locally. Mm -hmm. What you ideally you want to grow it yourself, mm -hmm. your own things you can produce from the land. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people they will only eat what they grow. Mm -hmm. They won't eat anything from up, bought outside, you know. You want to grow it themselves, mm -hmm. and they'll, eat, they'll live on that. In China also it's like that, mm -hmm. people do it like that. So yoga lifestyle, you know, as I said, it's a culture. So there's yoga music, you know, yoga music is that music which will help to elevate our consciousness, mm -hmm. to think more deeply about our own self which is conducive for meditation. You know, there are different kinds of sounds and they will affect the consciousness, mm -hmm. you know. Some sounds are very harsh and brutal and other sounds are very sweet and soothing. Like especially this, the sound of water mm -hmm. running, you know, the sound of, of, of flowing water can be very nice and uh, the sound of uh, trees, the breeze, breeze the blowing, trees. sound of birds, like that, peacocks, mm -hmm. you know, they have their own sounds, the, 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 the sound of the cows also, These, the, the kind of sounds that, you know, they're very pleasing to the ear. Mm. Some sounds are very frightening to the ear. So sound vibration, all of the diff our different senses, the, the, our perception should be, it should be in such a manner that we can feel comfortable and calm and relaxed and take away the anxiety and tension of the world. So that you want to have food like that, you want to have music like that, you want to have an atmosphere like that, you know, the atmosphere, it, it should be natural, it shouldn't be, you know, a lot of traffic, the noise of the traffic, you know, and the pollution, and so many things. All these things just simply disturb the mind. You know, every time you hear like a, an ambulance or a fire engine go by, you know, the, their siren is going and the, the, the sound is not pleasant to hear, you know. 
So we live in that kind of environment. It's very much the mode of passion. It's not conducive to meditation and to self-realization. We want to cultivate what is the mode of goodness. You know, the, if you read the Gita, it describes there are three qualities in nature. There's good passion and ignorance. So living in a city like Geneva, there's a lot of passion. And there's also ignorance that's also there. There's very less of goodness. Geneva is not too bad. They have quite a few parks with trees and so on. But it's mixed, passion and ignorance, as well with, with goodness. We want to enhance more, have more goodness in our life rather than the passion and mm. ignorance. So, cultivating goodness, you have to, we have to uh, get away from the artificial parts of life and it should be more natural living. It should be, ideally, it should be simple living with high thinking. Living simply, depending on nature, and contemplating the higher aspects of life. Mm -hmm. We want to think about think about where where are we going from here? You know, we have to think. That ultimately, we're not going to stay here forever. So we have to also think about the future. So it's not wrong. To think about the future means not just this this life, but it means after we finish in this life, where do we go? Mm. You know, in Hindu society, when somebody dies after their death, they'll have a a meeting and they'll talk about the person. You see. And they'll talk about what he did in the world and what his contributions were and so on. They call it a Smriti Sabha. And, and Smriti is the memories, you see. That's a, so you come together to remember this person's contribution to the world, what they did to help the world. So we want to think also, you know, what have we, what have we done? What have we contributed in this life? We want to, when, when we leave the world, we should think, what are people going to say about me? <laughs> you know, we, we have to we think like that. And that we, will inspire us more to act in a manner which is more compassionate, more caring, more loving, and less selfish. So yoga, is cultivating that consciousness. Yoga means to link. The word yoga is to link. To link the body, the mind, and the soul. We want to link these things to the Supreme. Mm -hmm. So there's different methods of yoga. Yeah. Bhagavad Gita describes the three main Paths, the karma yoga, yoga of action, jnana yoga, yoga of knowledge, and bhakti yoga, yoga of devotion. Of course, there, there are other, other processes also. You know, astanga yoga, astanga yoga is one part of it. What's happening? Hmm? What's happening? I don't understand. Shall I ask? No, you continue, I ask them. Astanga, Astanga Yoga is quite popular. But generally people who do Astanga Yoga, they only do one limb. Astanga, Asta means eight, and Anga means limbs. There are eight limbs in Astanga Yoga. Yam, Niyam, Asan, Pranayam, Pratyahara, Dharma, Dhyana, Samadhi. These are the Sanskrit words for the eight levels of yoga. Yam and Niyam, the first two 
are the things we should do and the things we shouldn't do. You know, the prohibitions and the regulations. Well, we shouldn't be greedy, we shouldn't get angry, we should control the mind and senses, we should be clean, we should be pure in our actions and in our thoughts and words, these kind of things. So this is, this is described by Patanjali. Patanjali, the hero book about yoga. Patanjali. And he describes the different levels, the different limbs, the eight levels. A book called the Yoga Sutra. Mm -hmm. Sutra. Sutra means condensed. It's put in a short form. Put in a short form. He just mentioned the principles, the main points, you know, what you're supposed to do. So the, the Astanga Yoga is like that. It begins with rules and regs. But people today, popular today, they, they won't do it. They won't bother to do uh, their rules and regulations. They will just simply do the asana. Mm -hmm. They like the gymnastic part. And if you ask them, what about the the first part, you know, are you vegetarian? Oh, no, no, we'll, you know, we'll worry about that later. You know, they just want to do the asanas. And pranayama is the nose pressing yoga. People, people do that. It's good for health. You can do that. But the real purpose of the pranayama is to prepare you for meditation to prepare you for meditation. A pranayama, you have to sit and you should sit still, you know. People are not much accustomed to sitting in one place for a long time. But actually to do this astang astanga yoga, you're supposed to do that. You're supposed to sit still in one place. So the pranayama, the asana makes the body flexible first of all. And then the pranayama gets you to sit in one place and mechanically control the mind. And then you go on and pra prajahara, dharana and jhana, there are different levels of meditation, concentration. First of all, prajahara, not contemplating anything external. Not, not seeing anything around us and cutting off your thoughts from anything around you in the external world. And prajahara, dharana, and then turning the concentration within. And then dhyana, meditating on the super soul. Meditation, you have to fix the mind. We should fix the mind on the form. There's a form, a per personality which is there, which is in the heart. So the yogis will contemplate that, that form, a Vishnu form, mm. which is in the heart. And then from meditation you come to samadhi, where you completely fix, the mind is fixed, it won't deviate. And one can remain in trance in the state of samadhi. So that's the Astanga Yoga. And the Astanga Yoga can also lead to Bhakti Yoga, it can also lead to devotion. And because once they contemplate the, the soul, the, the form in, within the heart, then they sh one should think, what is the connection? The yoga, how to connect with it, how to link. So that comes about by action, by activities. You dedicate your activities for the pleasure of the Supreme. So karma yoga, karma yoga is yoga of action. People, you know, like to do, be active and they don't often know much about why they're doing something, who they're doing it for, but they like to do things. You know, they have a good heart and they like to do things to help others. That's karma yoga. Detached work, detached, not attached to the result, 
not doing anything to get something, but doing it more for the concern of others, caring for others. In Jnana Yoga, one gets more knowledge. He may get association with somebody who is in knowledge or he may read scriptures. Like I said, Yoga Sutra, Bhagavad Gita, Mahabharata, Ramayana, Vedanta Sutra, there are many different scriptures we can read and get knowledge. You get knowledge about the soul, about our own self, about the mind, the nature of the mind and the working of the senses, all of these things. So you get a lot of information from reading scriptures and come to the platform of knowledge. So with knowledge then one is more able to meditate because you have information about the soul, about what the form of the soul is and how to meditate on it. So that's Jnana Yoga. Karma Yoga they didn't have that knowledge but Jnana Yoga they get that knowledge. And then that Jnana Yoga is meant to lead to Bhakti which is devotion understanding that there's a Supreme and we're, we're connected to the Supreme through loving service, by bhakti, by devotion. So to get that knowledge about bhakti you have to get that connection with someone who has bhakti. Someone who's got bhakti they can give you bhakti. It's difficult to get it on our own just to find it on our own, then it will take much longer time. But if somebody's got that bhakti, they can give it to us. How do they give it? Just simply by talking to us, by teaching us, by telling us about the nature of life and the nature of the mind and the senses and how to overcome the obstacles of life and how to proceed towards the goal of life. What is the goal of life? I have to understand there's something ahead. We can get that information from those people who have bhakti. So, bhakti is contagious, just like some diseases they are contagious. If somebody has typhoid, they can give it to others, you know, wherever they go, people will get typhoid, they'll get the disease also. But if you contact somebody who's got bhakti, who's got devotion, they can give you that also. They can give you the, this, this, uh, devotion, this connection to the Supreme. And that connection to the Supreme is very attractive and it, it's uh, considered that's the topmost level of yoga to develop that devotion, to develop that bhakti, that devotion. So it, it has to come about mainly through hearing, through hearing and and questioning and understand, contemplating, understanding, we can come to that level, bhakti. And once we come to bhakti then the, there's nothing after that, there's nothing higher than that in the yoga ladder. That's the top of the yoga ladder. One who has bhakti then he's satisfied in himself. He doesn't want anything in this world. He's satisfied within, him, within his own self. But just to have that bhakti, that, that mood of devotion. So he doesn't contemplate about material prosperity or any kinds of success in the material world. He's, he's completely satisfied with the mood of devotion to the Supreme. And that, that is bhakti, that's 
what we want to attain. We can come to that level. The yogis and different yogi, yogis generally they want mystic power. Some, some yogis they want to get power, you know, they want to control the world. There are different yoga powers, yoga cities they call, they're called cities. Some yogis can fly, some yogis can walk over water, some yogis can produce something from far away just by contemplating in the mind. And just by contemplating in the mind, things can rise up off the table, you know, they have that kind of mental power. But that's not the ultimate goal of yoga. This, those kind of powers are attractive to materialistic people, but it's not the highest level of yoga. It's, it's materialistic. And the yog these yogis, although they have that power, they're not really peaceful, they're not satisfied. Because somebody may have more power than them. So then they're, you know, they, they compete with them. Who's, who's the most powerful? And this way, they're not peaceful. They're not satisfied. And they're always striving to get more, to get more fame, to get more recognition. They don't have that inner peace, which is really the goal of yoga. Mm. Do, you, do you know any, any people not eating, just living from prana? Well, there are people just living on prana, yes. Maybe the, go they to They often live in, in like communities or? Usually they go to Himalayas. To the, be alone? Or? Yes, to be alone, mm. yes. Usually because they're not going to talk, they're mm. controlling the mind and senses, mm. restraining. They just simply contemplate the inner self. So they want live in a community and be on their own and they'll go into trance and remain in trance living on the crown so they can be like in, in India they have a festival at where the Ganga the river Ganges meets the Yamuna it's at a place called Prayagraj and they have a festival there every 12 years, once every 12 years and it's in the month of January or February in the beginning of the year. So there will be yogis who will come for that once every 12 years and they will be hundred. they can be hundreds of years old but they look like young men, you don't know. And they won't tell anyone. They're not going to be trying to get recognition. But they will come. And they will come, they'll take their bath in the holy rivers uh, at the auspicious time. And they'll go back. After the bathing there, they'll go back to their place in the mountains and continue their meditation. And they, they live uh, up there for, for many years actually. Yeah. Yeah, they live there a long time. That's not really the goal, you know. You can have a long life. The trees also live a long time. But the tree doesn't really have a high consciousness. You know, some trees are hundreds of years old, but that's not the goal of life. We have to consider the consciousness. If you just live hundreds of years, then so what? <laughs> what's, the, what's your goal? What's your purpose? 
just to have a long life. You still have to give up the body one day. So just to have a… you know pe there were great people, very great personalities like Shankaracharya. Did you ever hear his name? No. Shankaracharya. He's an incarnation of Lord Shiva. Mm -hmm. And he came in the world like 1200 years ago. Twelve, so 1200 years ago. So he was in the world only 32 years. Mm -hmm. But he wrote some very profound teachings. He wrote in the Sanskrit language and these teachings are read and appreciated even today. Would you please put me the name of that, that person? What's your goal of life, Sissi? <laughs> You're asking about yoga. Well, if I if I really knew, uh, I would be already quite a step <laughs> further up. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I just started thinking about it a yeah. couple of years ago. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you. you. Do you know yours? Mine is also with yoga. I, I'm not very interested uh, to continue like this in life after life with this world, material world. Mm -hmm. Every time there is death and then the birth again. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, the scripture says that we have an eternal life mm -hmm. and uh, we are an indi individual person in the spiritual world. And uh, there is God who is also an individual, he is a personality mm -hmm. and we have a loving relationship with him. Mm -hmm. Just like how you both are friends. Mm -hmm. We have some relation, each, each, we, each one is a soul and each one has a relationship with him. And by re-establishing that relationship, only by re-establishing that relationship we can be truly happy mm -hmm. and satisfied. That's all mentioned, I, I yes. There. Right, Guru Maharaj? Mm -hmm. Here it's a reflection of the spiritual world. The material world is a reflection of the spiritual world. But uh, there is not uh, eternal happiness here. Even, for example, here we have love, right? Love between man and woman. Love? Love. Love, love yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so, initially it's very sweet very it is very sweet but after some time it is it's uh, results in uh, some misery we get separated it's not uh, fully satisfying the relationship but it said like in the spiritual world it's pure it's uh, it doesn't have lust so it's very satisfying there are all kinds of relationships even in the spiritual world friendship parental love conjugal love like this it's all mentioned so and they they say this material world is just one fourth of the spiritual world and this are for the people who don't want to coordinate with the supreme mm. we are the souls who don't want mm -hmm. to coordinate with him that's what they have said and uh, yeah but uh, they also say like it takes lifetimes for some, uh, they only some few souls can think all this why I'm here what is happening after I go not everybody uh, few it takes uh, well, they maybe can but they are hmm? they, they they don't want to cross that barrier mm. they, they they're not ready to to want to know mm. They, uh, I started uh, chanting the Hare Krishna mantra. After one, I started with uh, every day, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. And then after one year, I was practicing actually many, many things parallelly because I want to have a path, some meditation, one, something and all. I was also, I thought this Hare Krishna will work the least for me. Mm -hmm. I was practicing 10 minutes and then after one year I thought it really works for my mind. Mm -hmm. Then uh, 
I increased the, the uh, meditation yeah. time yeah. of telling Hare Krishna. It's like uh, uh, you have to Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Like this, you have to concentrate on the sound. And it said by Chaitanya who gave the mantra, it purifies your mind. Mm -hmm. And uh, gradually, gradually we will be able to be understand the philosophy. Even Maharaj is um, really very elevated. Uh, and even if he presents everything, <laughs> we are not in a state to understand it because our senses are not so purified. But uh, he is always, uh, he is very kind that he wants to give this to people like you who are inquisitive, wants to understand. And then um, you have to maybe if you are in, you have to read the books, some of the books, like some of the books and uh, see if you are convinced and start chanting. That's what we suggest if you want to do the bhakti yoga the ashtanga yeah the other yoga systems uh, i don't know yeah other yoga systems other yoga systems are not very effective for me i could say that i was practicing pranic meditation pranic healing meditation what they will do is uh, they have they activate the chakras from uh, oh, there is a meditation I have to sit and the, they open the heart chakra there is not full information also I was actually doing that uh, then uh, it, it doesn't have the full information like uh, it doesn't say clearly that you are a spirit soul and who, who, now you are convinced about it right like we are a spirit soul are you convinced about this yeah, point yeah, yeah. Hmm? And uh, if we are a spirit soul, then the next question is, uh, what's the nature of that spirit soul? And the nature is, we are eternal, full of happiness. They say like that, not like now. It's our body is not eternal. We have to die one day. A lot of uh, we we are not full of happiness, right? Everybody, <laughs> no, yes, not <laughs> so. We are we are not that nature, definitely. And then. Um, then uh, uh, like uh, then the spirit soul is a part and parcel of one supreme we all have one supreme and then the spirit soul we have a relationship with the supreme and we have to find out the relationship with the supreme by practice of uh, bhakti yoga that's the mm -hmm. i could say that's the essence mm -hmm. something like that Yeah, there's, it's, uh, there's, uh, there's many, many different techniques and, and, and beliefs which at the end don't say exactly the same, but do say the same. I would say, if mm. you, well, one is talking of prana, the other one is talking of chi, but it's, it's the same. And even if they, they express it with different words, the final, it, it's the all coming to, together. together, you know. But yeah, it's 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 not that easy to. You have to, to try. find your you, way of meditation. You have to try. What try you, to yeah, you have best. to try. You have to try. You have to try, and uh, this Krishna will help you to find because He knows the heart of every person. Then there will be help from the Supreme. He knows why. You have to try. Keep try. Yeah, you have to try in different ways and find out. Maybe right, Guru Maharaj. Yeah. You know, some people well, they will see God in the universe. They will see all the different features of nature as representing the supreme, representing a supreme being. They will see, for example, the mountains is like bones on the body of the Supreme and the rivers are like veins on the body of the Supreme. And the higher planet, the sun is like the eye of the earth. Mm. For me it was difficult to think like this for me. But for some people it's difficult for them to see how a deity can represent the Supreme. Mm. So they have to see it through nature mm. because they're not able to understand how the deity, how yeah. the manifestation of the Supreme can come in the form of a, mm. a deity. Deity means that... Yeah, I know, I, 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 I understand what you say. I think for, 
if if you're not born in in India and and you you are kind of educated with with all the different deities and because there's so many for a stranger it's it's difficult to understand mm, yeah. you really have to study it profoundly or live there and study it otherwise mm, yeah but well, I mean this is I think this is not no not the, the, the essence of of it if if you call it God, or you call it nature, or you call it deities. At the end, for me, it's it's all the same. It's just some some people uh, feel more attracted by by this or or, or this. Yeah. yeah, certainly some people are more attracted to sit and silently contemplate the supreme within. They think that's very spiritual. No, it can be spiritual. Depends on on their attitude, how they apply themselves to it. Other people, they will think it's very spiritual to, you know, do the yoga exercises, the hatha yoga. They think that's very spiritual. If they can do the different postures, the gymnasts. The, and for other people, you know, they think the pranayama. And controlling the breathing, they're thinking that is very great. So there's all different ways in which people will show their progress in the yoga discipline. But there are also many bogus yogas nowadays. Uh, so dif uh, like uh, they go for the yoga school for a long time. There is no improvement progress. Yes, there are many bogus yoga schools. Well, it depends the teacher also, like mm. like for everything and everywhere. Yeah, everywhere. Because if, if sometimes nobody is pushing you a bit, you stay. Mm. The yeah, same the same thing, thing yeah. that's also there. Or you push yourself, or you have a teacher who is pushing. Mm. You know, if you can heal the sick, then you're considered very powerful yogi. If, if you, you can, can heal the sick? If you can heal, if you ah. can cure someone's disease. Mm. And she was telling me there's this one lady who her saliva can cure people from leprosy. Yeah. From la leprosy. leprosy. There is one yogi in, uh, yeah, one, in, one in India. She has some. Leprosy Powers. is where you have some worms yeah, in no, the body eating the flesh, you know. So, yeah, she she can cure. She has uh, through yoga. You can also develop some powers. Huh? Power, powers. powers. Uh, but doesn't mean that your heart is clean. You are perfected your life. Like, but you can develop some power. We uh, still is there. Some yogis can walk on the water. Um, my friend said, still a uh, person I see, he, she, he walks on the water. So he has developed some powers through mm -hmm. yoga, which doesn't mean that uh, he's a great person, mm -hmm. like a god, like very pure. It doesn't mean like that. Yeah. So sometimes people uh, go and uh, they think uh, they are like God, this uh, people who has powers. Mm -hmm. That's what we yeah, see. It depends on what what do you want to learn the yoga for. For example, you're asking Guru, uh, Guru Maharaj about yoga, like the teacher. So what's your aim to learn yoga? Why you want to learn learn yoga? Any... <laughs> it's, it's for me, it's not not that much about about yoga itself mm. it was just a chance to know more about the different parts, the parts yeah right. that go together because mm. Uh, mm. I I mean I know it's not just exercise and it's not just meditation but uh, I, I give you mm. there's a progression the there's a progression together there's a ladder one level of yoga to the other mm. Generally, it but where where would you usually start then? You usually start karma yoga. Ka? 
karma yoga. Karma yoga, the yoga Which of means? action. Mm -hmm, okay. And, and you have to work in a detached manner. You do work for the benefit of the Supreme. Mm -hmm. You sacrifice the result of your work for the Supreme. Mm -hmm. That is called karma yoga. Mm -hmm. For example? Well, just like you may go to a temple and they may ask you to clean the floor. You clean the floor in the temple, that is like doing karma yoga. They're not going to pay you, you're just doing it for mm -hmm. the service of the Supreme. Mm -hmm. In Bhagavad Gita, did you read Bhagavad Gita yet? What of Bhagavad Gita? Hmm. You haven't read Bhagavad Gita. Anyway, uh, Bhagavad, you should read it, you should get a copy. Maybe okay. I can give in a French Bhagavad Gita, I'll get you a French copy of Bhagavad Gita. It's, the, it's, it's not the one you gave tomorrow? No, no that's a very else. small book. Huh? It doesn't, uh, yes, it's also good, but it's just a few things. I will get you this French copy. Yeah. Bhagavad Gita means the song of God. The song. 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 Gita. Gita means song. Song. Yes, song. So mm. Bhagavad means coming from Bhagavan. Bhagavan means the supreme personality of God. God, Krishna. So when Krishna speaks, they say Sri Bhagavan Uvacha. Bhagavan said, they will say Lord Krishna said. Lord Krishna is called Bhagavan. Bhagavan means one who possesses opulence. Anyway, it, it takes the speaking of Bhagavad Gita takes place on a battlefield before a great battle is taken place. And uh, Arjuna is hearing, he's, he's with Krishna, the two are together. Arjuna... It doesn't have to be French, uh, it can also be English. Okay, okay. Sorry for... Arjuna is there with Krishna, the two, they're friends. Mm -hmm. Now Arjuna is supposed to fight. And... Uh, Lord Krishna is driving his chariot. Mm -hmm. But Arjuna, when he came into the middle of the battlefield, he became bewildered and he thought, I don't want to fight, it's not right. And he was thinking it's not right. But Lord Krishna spoke to him and explained to him why he should fight. Mm -hmm. And he told him to do it as a karma yoga. Mm -hmm and do it as a sense of duty, without being attached to the result. Mm -hmm. <laughs> not easy. Uh, not easy. Uh, not easy uh, anyway, but, but I think even less easier to, to think of a, a karmic result. Yeah, but these things will take time to understand, you know. I have to read the book. Uh, I have to read the book yeah. several times. Yeah. First time I opened, I couldn't really understand anything, you know, even though I'm from him. Like, uh, then it takes or time. Or you read and you forget too fast. Yes, and we cannot understand. It takes time to understand. You have to, if you have to practice yoga. Anyway, I'll get you this copy of the book, Bhagavad Gita. You can read before, you. yeah. Moro, mm -hmm. do you have some questions? <laughs> no? You want to try? <laughs> We are all talking about yoga. <laughs> yeah. I'm learning. Okay. Ba Bhagavad Gita is very well known, very famous all over the world. It, it's taken from the Mahabharata. Mahabharata is a, a, another, it's a bit more voluminous book. And Bhagavad Gita is a part of the Mahabharata. Mahabharata is the history of the world, 5,000 years ago. But that was written by someone yeah. that is known? Yeah, written by Vyasadeva. Vyasadeva is a great, great Sage. personality, saintly personality. When was it written? Well, 
he spoke it 5,000 years ago and he had Ganesh write it down. Ganesh was a scribe. Vyasa spoke and Ganesh wrote down. Because Vyasa Dev could see uh, that Kali, this age is coming, Kali Yuga, it's called as Kali Yuga. This that we are in now? It's called as Kali Yuga. Ah. He predicted the symptoms of the Kali Yuga that people will be short-lived, uh, they will be quarrelsome, even for the slightest uh, misunderstanding they will quarrel and they are misfortunate, all the symptoms. In fact, there is also a symptom like uh, people will think uh, if they have different hairstyles, they can be beautiful, something like this. He has predicted the symptoms, of, it's going to be, he predicted that it's going to be very bad. So then uh, he thought he have to write it down, all the knowledge, and he has written it down, the Vedas, and this is an important part of the uh, uh, his book. Yes, India. It stays huh? only in one book, or uh, are there many volumes? The Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad yes. Gita is one book. Only one book. Yes, it's. There are eighteen chapters in the Bhagavad Gita. There's seven hundred verses, 700 verses in Sanskrit, mm. which are translated. And the system is usually with each verse, the person will, who is writing, who is translating, will give a comment, he will explain the verse, give some... Every verse is explained. Yeah, you should definitely worth reading, uh, going through a book. Okay. So Bhagavad like Gita is a book for life. You can read it your whole life. And the, every time you read it, you get something new from it. That's the nature of these, these books. That they're, they're not ordinary. They're not like a newspaper, you know. Yes. You put it down and throw it away. But Bhagavad Gita, you want to read it again and again. There's a message there. Where are you going next after Geneva? Uh, I'm going to Amsterdam, so, Rotterdam. Next week, uh, we are at to book the ticket. We have to book the tickets. He's uh, leaving on next Friday. Mm -hmm. You, you're going to see someone you know there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you also give teachings to like conferences or things like this? Yeah, when, when the time arises then we do that also. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. in India mm -hmm. and sometimes do it online. Yeah, he gives uh, nice classes. We teach courses online for Bhagavad Gita and so on. There's courses on it. Which talk about uh, what exactly? Talk about? What, what, what do, do you talk about in, in these teachings? Well, talk about the Bhagavad Gita, the message of the Bhagavad Gita. Mm -hmm. Explain everything. Okay. What's going on? What's being taught there? You have to. You have to have, go through the Bhagavad Gita yourself. <laughs> yeah. See. Cannot be As explained. Said, the three main yogas: Karma Yoga, Jnana Yoga, Bhakti Yoga. But other yogas are also included. We learn about material nature. We learn about God. We learn about the living entity. We learn about karma. These things are all described in Bhagavad Gita. Five main topics are there. Yeah. Who is God? Who are the living entities? What's karma? And what's and the material what world? And what's, what's the living entities? What's the living entities? Living entities are all souls. We're all souls. Talking about the souls. 
Yes. Ah, okay. Hmm. There are 8,400,000 different species of life. So there are plants and animals, there are fish, birds, there are insects, there are trees. These are all different species of life. Mm -hmm. So the human species of life. They, so they are considered also part, part of, of it. They're also so. They're all living entities, mm -hmm. they, have a, they have life. Mm -hmm. The life comes from the soul. Without the soul, then it's a dead body. Mm -hmm. The difference between the living and the dead, there's no soul in the dead. Mm -hmm. But something is alive, it's alive because there's a soul. This consciousness is mm -hmm. coming from the soul. Now the consciousness will be different in different bodies. Just like the consciousness in a tree is going to be different from the consciousness within an animal or a human. The consciousness in the human form of life is considered the highest. And do you think that there's also uh, other entities like uh, extraterrestrial something? There's life everywhere. There's life all over the universe. There's life in other planets. Yes. We believe there's life also in other planets, other places. Life is not limited to just this planet. Of course, the atmosphere on this planet arranges for a particular life, form of life. But the atmosphere on other planets will be a different form of life. Just like on the sun planet, you have fire. So there, be, there can be fire bodies. There can be life within fire. And there can be life in uh, a, a gaseous planet, just gas, you know, can be in the form of gas. Well, on the stars? No, not on the earth, on other planets. He's asking on the stars. On the stars? Stars, yes. Stars too, or on the planets? Well, stars, there's also stars. Stars, there's also living entities there. Everywhere there's life. Everywhere. Different levels of life. Different places throughout the universe. And the stars and the other planets also. It's and you believe that they 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 can come and, and, and visit us or, or, or things like that? Well, there, ha there are people who have seen uh, some kind of uh, other beings from Yeah, because there's, there's some unexplained things like constructing the pyramids, uh, these uh, enormous rocks in, in South America that cannot be carried or transported by any human being as we know it on this earth. Or, or, or this, you have these symbols in, in the fields. I don't remember how you call it. Remember? Like symbols in, 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 in the field. Yeah. That they're, they're amazingly done, like perfectly round, and it cannot be done by, by human. I mean, you see it, and you see that it cannot. Yes, there are many things we cannot explain. That's why we believe there's life mm. in other places, not just only here. It's very short sighted to think life is only here on this planet. So we accept that there are different levels of life. There are higher planets, heavenly planets like that, 
where they will have a long life and they have a lot of power, supernatural power. And there are lower planets also. There's regions below and where you have hellish planets. And there's also a region which is called subterranean heavenly planet. It's in the lower region of the universe, but it's very opulent. So there, there, the Vedas describe these different things. They describe different conditions mm -hmm. throughout the universe. But they say also that everywhere within the universe is a place of birth and death. That it's, there's everywhere the, the, you take birth, one day you also die. Mm. So the life is temporary, mm. it's not eternal. But the Vedas tell us there's another world which is beyond this world, which is beyond the material creation, which is eternal, which is not subject to destruction. And that is the spiritual world. Mm. And in the spiritual world, there are far more living entities living there and enjoying a life of eternal bliss and knowledge. And by yoga, you can go there. We can travel there by yoga. So different types of yoga can take you to different places. Some yoga can elevate you to higher planets within the universe, but bhakti yoga can take you beyond the universe into the spiritual realm. You never have to come back. Or you can choose, that's what some say. Yeah. Choose, yeah, we if have you, if you wanna if you wanna stay there or, or, or go back. Yeah. He passes and yeah. I'm, luckily I just <laughs> Yeah, I was also thinking we should stop. 